Okay, we will continue now with the uh, next talk. It's a great pleasure to announce uh, Sonia Montegiove from Italy. Uh, she will talk about uh, migration to liberal office, especially uh, uh, migration in the uh, Ministry of Defense in Italy. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Sonia Montegiove and I'm a software analyst. I work in public administration. And about three years ago, I coordinate with others uh, a migration project named Libre Umbria uh, that involved about uh, 5,000 PCs uh, of Umbrian public administration. And now I'm president of Libre Italia Association and I'm a member of uh, the Document Foundation. Uh, Libre Italia. Libre Italia is a no-profit association, a voluntary as Italian association made up of developers, uh, ICT specialists, civil servants, uh, trainers, uh, teachers and ordinary users who wish to share news, uh, information and solutions about uh, LibreOffice and especially about uh, um, migration project from um, uh, proprietary software to free and open source software. Uh, Libre Italia um, founders uh, are 23 uh, ICT uh, specialists uh, and civil servants with a valuable experience of migration project uh, in public administration and uh, on enterprises. And uh, many of the founders uh, are also members of the Document Foundation and therefore uh, um, actively engaged in the LibreOffice project. Libre Italia's Google Plus uh, community has about uh, 2,700 uh, active members that every day share information, uh, news, and solutions about problems. And um, it represents uh, um, uh, an, important, uh, uh, an important community uh, for professional and uh, um, domestic users. But um, what is the problem of free and open source software, uh, especially in Italy, I hope also in Italy? Um, and why uh, do not public administrations, for example, adopt uh, free and open source software? Um, in Italy, uh, when you talk uh, free and open source software, people are surprised because very, very often are surprised because um, they don't know what you are talking about. Uh, and it's not uh, a generation problem. It doesn't depend on your degree, on where you live, uh, on your geographic statement. It's just a cultural problem. Uh, and this is what we learned from our seminars and meetings in public administration and in schools and uh, in the university too. Um, so, what do we need and uh, what does free and open source software need? Mm, I think that certainly we need money, uh, money to pay developers and uh, to organize events and seminars and courses and training sessions. Uh, sure, we need volunteers engaging the community. But above all, free and open source software, I think, uh, needs communication. Because if we communicate in the right way uh, the all the opportunities of free and open source software and the ethical values that it embodies, uh, the benefits of open source, especially in public administration, I think uh, we would have much uh, better chance to spread it. Um, and what do people think about free and open source software? Um, I want to talk about the best five mistaken beliefs about open source. The first one, uh, when you say uh, open source, people think only of the word free. And so they think that they don't pay for the software and uh, they can save money. But they think that the software is not a good one. Mm, unfortunately, the word free 
uh, often is uh, synonymous of, of uh, uh, lesser and lower value. And when you say you can use LibreOffice, people think, oh, okay, LibreOffice, uh, it looks like Microsoft Office, not the same thing, but similar. But they think uh, that LibreOffice is a makeshift solution. And when uh, you say LibreOffice, uh, they think that can use uh, Google Docs for free. So uh, they don't really need another free program. Unfortunately, they don't think about security aspects and digital freedom, for example. They don't reflect that saving a document in the cloud means saving a document not in your PC, but in someone else's. And in Italy, uh, also in the schools and in public administrations, uh, sometimes uh, you can find cracked software. And this is the worst example and message that we can give to the students. The culture of legality should be valued and supported uh, uh, with free and open source software, I think. And when you talk about the community of, uh, of open source, people think, oh, I, I, I'm not a developer, I'm not a nerd, so I can't help the community. But it's wrong. We have to say you are part of the community also using free and open source software. We must help people to contribute and engage the community. And the list of mistaken beliefs about free and open source software could go on, uh, um, and we would have to stay here until the next year. So what does Libre Italia do in this uh, two first year of activity? Libre Italia contributed the spreading free and open source software in public, especially in public administration, supporting the growth of digital culture and the value of sharing and reusing. We promoted the spreading of the open format ODF, especially in public administration because we need interoperability and we need to guarantee permanent access to data and information. Libre Italia promoted the, the digital culture and skills, in particular in schools and university, organizing uh, uh, free courses, free online courses, too, and uh, seminars and training sessions uh, um, to, to provide all citizens equal access to technology and equal opportunities of participation to the knowledge society. And thanks also to the communication work of our association, uh, last year we signed an agreement with Italian Defense uh, that is going to migrate uh, the, its um, um, 150,000 PCs and it's adopting ODF format. Uh, and I'm very, very happy because uh, uh, this is the biggest migration project, the biggest Italian migration project to free and open source software for a public administration. And what can I say about LibreOffice? Uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, you know it. Uh, LibreOffice is a complete software package uh, that you can use to write a document, to make uh, a spreadsheet, uh, to manage data, uh, to organize a presentation like this, and to make a draw. And uh, about the quality of, uh, of LibreOffice, uh, um, I can say uh, that uh, there are automated tests in LibreOffice based on 10,000 documents. Uh, and with the tests, uh, we can try the interoperability 
uh, for example, between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice, and in general, uh, the interoperability between LibreOffice and other saving formats. And for the security, uh, we can say that there are uh, security-independent tests, and weekly the source code is scanned by Coverity Scan, uh, a service that finds and fixes defects uh, in your source code. And in this graph, uh, you can see that uh, LibreOffice has uh, uh, a lower average of defects uh, for 100 lines uh, of code. And uh, it doesn't mean that uh, LibreOffice hasn't bug, but uh, it means that LibreOffice uh, has uh, a good quality of source code. LibreOffice uh, adopts uh, uh, the standard ODF, Open Document Format, uh, recognized by many governments and organizations worldwide, including NATO and now Italian Defense, and based on true open standards uh, as the default format for all office documents. Many public administrations uh, choose LibreOffice. For example, French government uh, about uh, uh, 500,000 PCs in 15 ministries, and uh, Valencia and Copenhagen healthcare system, and Munich uh, that use also Linux operating system. And I am proud uh, to say that Libre Difesa uh, reuse uh, the best practice of uh, our migration project uh, Libre Umbria. Um, in this project, uh, um, we shared uh, project documents, uh, slides, uh, best practice, and other materials because other public administration and enterprises could save time and money reusing our products. And I believe that the example of uh, Italian defense uh, it's fantastic because all the documents and materials could, uh, could be improved and shared at the same way to help other public administration and enterprises that want to, uh, to choose uh, LibreOffice. Um, free and open source software help us to uh, reuse the work of others. I think uh, um, that we can promote the best use of skills and time and materials, especially in public administration. Uh, we'd like uh, um, to, uh, to build a network of public administration uh, that choose uh, uh, free and open source software um, to, to promote the, the reusing of, of their experiences. And um, here you can see the, the Document Foundation Migration Protocol uh, the protocol uh, uh, choose uh, by Italian Defense and Libre Umbria and other migration project um, because uh, um, we have to say that uh, migration projects are not simple project. Simplicity is a complexity resolved. So uh, migration projects are complex in general especially uh, the migration project to free and open source software uh, because uh, of the underlying problems represented by the resistance to change and um, by the, the third part uh, so proprietary software, uh, the encompassing uh, third part proprietary software and for the, con the conversion of document template and uh, um, spreadsheet uh, with uh, macros, uh, for example. Uh, and the migration to LibreOffice represents uh, an excellent, and, an excellent opportunity to rethink the organization processes. 
And for example, you can uh, rethink the utility, the utility of the macro uh, in the spreadsheet and re-engineer the process uh, in order to reduce the impact of uh, resistance to change. It's important to start the migration project with a communication activity targeted uh, to the entire organization. When the migration process uh, starts, all managers and employees should be, um, uh, should be know the reasons of the migration project and should be know that LibreOffice, for example, is a, a valuable replacement for Microsoft Office and should be know that uh, LibreOffice uh, is implemented on millions of desktop reference uh, documents worldwide. And another important step for any migration project is training. The training of LibreOffice at different levels should be provided to IT personnel, trainers, uh, technology leaders, uh, ordinary users, uh, middle and upper management, and all end users. You can, tra you can train the, the, the users um, with internal trainers or by external enterprise, but you have to organize a training session for the users. The analysis for the migration project of defense started last year, I think, but on um, 4th June, they decided uh, the migration with uh, an official document. And on uh, 16th June, uh, General Sileo, the project manager of Libre Difesa, uh, wrote us a word to Libre Italia an email uh, asking a meeting uh, to know how Libre Italia uh, would collaborate with them um, in the migration to, to LibreOffice. And we signed an agreement with the defense on 15 September. And in the effort, in the effort uh, Libre Italia guaranteed its free support for adopting the, the document foundation protocol of migration, for training of the trainer, for uh, the realization of an e-learning course uh, of LibreOffice uh, and for the organization of meetings uh, with the manager of the defense to present the migration project. And this is the activities uh, uh, that Libre Italian Defense realized uh, in the last month. Uh, uh, communication to top ranks, uh, training the trainers, uh, uh, the internal trainers, uh, training uh, to internal support staff, uh, training to IT leaders in departments, uh, seminars to top ranks, uh, screening of third party applications, uh, analysis of training needs, uh, and, uh, and now um, there, there are impact tests on pilot uh, departments and uh, uh, the migration to LibreOffice started on January um, with some pilot organizations and now uh, there are about 5,000 PCs with LibreOffice and I'm very happy because they, they haven't any problems. Uh, we, about the online courses uh, of LibreOffice, we can say that uh, we realized about uh, uh, 20 lessons uh, already available uh, with differences between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice. Uh, the defense will publish uh, the course under copyleft. So uh, we think that we can localize uh, um, rather easily in other languages, uh, for example. And additional training lessons will be available uh, in the next month uh, um, for the uh, European Computer Driving License with LibreOffice. 
And uh, here there are five questions and answers uh, that the, user, the users uh, usually do in the migration project. Uh, the first one, uh, will the migration be a worse of, of time? We can say no. We can say no because end user training will increase the capability of using LibreOffice and software in general and solving problems themselves. And the user can solve problems themselves. The internal processes will be modified and improved and uh, re-engineered. Uh, so, um, templates and documents with macros, uh, for example, can be improved or remake. Uh, um, so, uh, the migration uh, isn't a waste of time for the user. The second one, uh, should we anticipate an increase of calls to help desk? Especially in public administration, the calls to help desk uh, is a problem, um, but we can say no because uh, calls to help desk are usually decreasing thanks to end user training in classroom and uh, plus e-learning, thanks to support from colleagues or uh, thanks to support of the community, for example. And should we foresee a review and update of all documents? We can say no, because most Microsoft Office documents, spreadsheets and presentations will open as they are. So they don't need any modify. Only a few need a more consistent rework, especially spreadsheet with macros. Uh, or um, particular template uh, or uh, some presentations uh, uh, that use uh, uh, proprietary um, format, um, for example, word art uh, or uh, smart art uh, that PowerPoint uh, uh, use. And will and user complain about the migration? Oh, <laughs> yes. Communication will reduce the resistance to change and uh, will engage the user, uh, the users in the project. But uh, I think that uh, three or ten percent of users will physiologically complain, especially in public administration. And uh, will we get the necessary support from the ecosystem? We can say yes, because uh, LibreOffice community can help smoothing the migration process uh, with uh, volunteer support, but there are uh, many enterprises and many ICT professionals also certified LibreOffice professional uh, in the ecosystem. So uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, have support uh, from the community and from the enterprises too. And uh, the lesson learned, lesson learned, we think that the TDF migration protocol represents a reference, an important reference for the success of the migration uh, to free and open source software. Not only LibreOffice, I think, but all free and open source software. Uh, for example, Italian Defense uh, perhaps uh, um, will choose other free and open source software. I don't know when and, uh, and what, but uh, I think that they will choose other free and open source software, for example, for the managing of the email. Uh, and uh, they, can, uh, they can organize the migration uh, with the document foundation protocol of migration. Um, and we learned that impossible migration don't exist. 
if you approach the migration uh, with a committed project uh, uh, team and respect uh, the, the, the steps and the reference project schedule, uh, you can migrate uh, all public administration and all enterprises. And um, the communication and training are fundamental tasks for migration, are the most fundamental tasks. And uh, volunteers uh, are, uh, are our best resource, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the Thank attention. You. Any questions? Um, so you had a, a slide with a timeline of the process, and there was a line called the security clearance of LibreOffice. So could you explain it a little bit more? What did the, it... security? Security the security? Security clearance. Oh, OK. Uh, about the security, uh, Italian defense uh, um, made a test of security, uh, obviously, and, uh, and they, the, the tests are, um, are positive, so they, they, they choose, uh, they choose the LibreOffice. Uh, it's correct? Huh? Oh, mm, I th I don't know what they what they they do. I think they they made the penetration test. Uh, if I understood uh, correctly, uh, the migration is led by non-government organization. I don't understand. Uh, who is the main uh, implementer of migration? Libre Italia. Uh huh. Libre Italia. Great. <laughs> it's impossible in Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, our Ministry of Defense hired Microsoft to check and improve security. <laughs> That's enough. So. Any question more? No, oh, thank you very much. Thank you.